So when I was younger, I used to hate Fords. My dad always had a piece of crap Ford pickups. They never worked right. They always left us stranded and I hated them. Didn't want a Ford. I ended up buying this Ford, this V10, and it's been the most reliable vehicle I've ever freaking had. I've always been a Dodge Mopar fanatic and I still am. I love Cummins until I bought this truck. I bought this truck with problems and I'll go into that in a minute, but I want to show you guys what's going on now. Do a little cold start and you can really hear it. Seems to be idling better today. So hopefully you guys can actually hear me over that. Um, there's, <laughs> there's no muffler on that truck. A couple of weeks ago, I took the truck out or tried to take the truck out when it was really cold. I started it up, I heard a ticking sound, didn't sound right took off with it. it was really easy on the truck i hadn't warmed up yet and never really even rolled into the throttle more than a quarter of throttle and then just driving down the road by 55 i heard it and it sounded like a dead cylinder so i limped it back home took the valve cover off you guys remember that video if not go to my old videos and you can check it out um and one of the valve bridges was just laying on top of the cylinder head so i pulled the rocker assembly off pulled the injector out swapped injector number one and six thinking maybe it's an injector issue and I had used my uh, camera on number six exhaust and it was about 40, 50 degrees hotter than the rest of them. And reading through the comments, a lot of guys had a good, you know, really good suggestions. Hey, sounds like a bad exhaust valve. And these Cummins are really well known for bad exhaust valves, um, specifically the seats. This cylinder head was put on by Holden Brothers Diesel in 2018. If you guys don't remember the story about this truck, this was Mark Carricker, homemade everything on YouTube. Um, he bought this truck and he had started having issues with it. He put, I believe, three or four transmissions, might have even been five transmissions in it. Um, he had to pull the cylinder head off because the exact same thing happened on his. Started having a ticking sound and some valve recession. So he had Holden Brothers Diesel put a performance built, you know, it's supposed to be a performance built cylinder head. I don't know what that entails. Normally on a Cummins that entails some oversized uh, hardened valve seats installed, um, oversized valves and everything, but I have no idea what actually was done to the head. I do know it has studs, um, ARP studs, so that's a good thing, but now I don't know. Now I don't think the truck has had very many miles on it since that cylinder head's been installed. The cylinder head was installed in 2018, 2019, Mark got it back and then I think four months, two or three months after that, he found that he had cancer. He stopped driving the truck so much. Um, and then he was driving the truck one day and it sheared the input shaft off. Lo and behold, whoever Mark had the last transmission um, replaced, decided that those three studs that are sticking down on the back of the transmission to go to the cross member, we don't need to put nuts on those. We'll just leave it alone. So the transmission the entire time was flopping up and down. And I'm sure that had and then, you know, it didn't help the problem, but the 48 REs are pretty well known for shearing input shafts with uh, modified engines. Mark installed some 30% over Exergy injectors in this thing and had uh, Holden Brothers dyno it at like 518 or 580 horsepower to the rear wheels. I can't remember which one on the maximum tune setting. Well, I got the transmission. Um, Got some parts donated from Sonax. I got John Elford with dynamic transmission on board to rebuild the uh, valve, uh, valve body for it. Got all the parts and everything and then tried to put it together myself. Could not figure out what the hell I was doing wrong with the overdrive assembly. I just couldn't, didn't make sense to me. Reached out to Precision Transmissions on YouTube. Couldn't get a hold of those guys. Reached out to some other people. Nobody responded. Um, reached out to every single avenue that I possibly could and all I wanted to do was pay somebody to assemble the transmission let me take the components there and I just wanted to be there I wanted to be able to film it and I wanted to see what the hell I did wrong and no one was willing to do it on top of that no one was even willing to have me 
drop the parts off at their shop and have them assemble it. I don't know what the deal is with transmission guys, and I, I sort of get it. You don't want a guy showing up to your business, you know, with a box full of parts, but if that's what you specialize in, then it really doesn't matter. If you showed up to my shop with a box full of 36, or 30, you know, Caterpillar 3406 parts, I would know where every single one of those components went. I've rebuilt a ton of those engines in the oil field. Wouldn't matter. But <clears throat> that wasn't the case. I finally found somebody that was willing to put it together, gave him the transmission, and then about nine months later, got it back. Installed it in a truck, started a truck in November, got it running, got it on the road, and then it worked pretty well November, December, until January, and then the valve bridge popped off. Um, I started up the other day, if you guys remember that video, it just didn't sound right. It has this kind of like and it sounds like an exhaust valve issue. So I'm pretty convinced that the cylinder head is going to come, have to come back off and be gone through and figure out what's going on. So right now I'm going to go drive the truck, I'm going to let it warm up, and I'm going to use my FLIR camera when I get back and shoot temperatures on all the cylinders, on their exhaust runners rather, and see if we have a temperature gradient difference. If I have a huge gradient difference for cylinder six, then I know there's something going on with the cylinder six exhaust valve and the head's gonna have to come off. The fear that I have is if I keep driving this truck with a valve problem, that valve seat, if it's having issues, can actually pop out of the head and when it pops out of the head, it'll shear that valve off and then the valve goes down inside the piston and the piston gets crammed up into the cylinder head and then you've mean me then i have bought a brand new cylinder head a brand new set of pistons and basically rebuilding an entire freaking five nines cummins engine and um yeah i can't afford it um, really hoping that this isn't a problem with this truck because i don't know if this truck's cursed or what but even pulling the cylinder head off of it and just a head gasket and you know, some machine work is uh, gonna be, uh, it's gonna have its own cost and it's just not a cost I can eat right now. Let's go test drive it, see what we have and cross our fingers and hope that the cylinder head doesn't have to come off and it's just some kind of weird fluke that's happening and I'm just overanalyzing it in my head. So on top of all the other issues, the mechanical issues I've been having with this truck, um, I went down and got the truck from Mark had a bill of sale, had a title, and left it in the filing cabinet at my house and then split with my ex and we went through a divorce. And now she just, she doesn't know where the title went and the bill of sale went apparently. So I get to get stuck with trying to get that remedied. And the only two options that I have at this point are to get a bonded title, which costs money. And you have to get bonded title insurance, which is extra insurance. They take like, it's a certain percentage off base of the value of the truck and this truck's valued at like seventeen thousand dollars or something like that right now and so it's going to cost me i think a thousand fifteen hundred dollars or i think it's fifteen hundred dollars what i looked up for bond bonded title insurance for a year or i can file a mechanics lien against it and go through that process but i've tried to do that and i ended up in a roadblock in that um area so i'm probably going to have to end up getting a bonded title but Anyway, let's drive down the road here, let this thing warm up, and then come back and shoot some temps. see if I can get this on camera but I need to fix this tag got to pull the whole instrument cluster out yeah you can see it moving got to pull the instrument cluster out and then basically re reflow one of the chips on it Seventeen hundred RPMs. I have my foot anywhere on the throttle. 
bottle. curious the check engine lights on because of the video I made the other day where I pulled the connector off the CP3 pump off the um, FCA solenoid the fuel control actuator <clears throat> whenever you do that it registers as a fault then you gotta clear the code I just ain't got around to it yet Well, the temps seem okay. Nothing's drastically different. The end of that runner on the far end by number six, there is one spot of that runner getting about 350 degrees. But if I search around and hunt with my FLIR camera, I can find other spots in the manifold on the other side that are the same temperature. So I just shot the temperature right where the flange bolts up to the head. That's the most consistent place that I can find. The temperatures are all within about 10 degrees. All right, I don't know, it seems to be fine. Might just be a false alarm and the other day, uh, the other video that I made where it sounded like crap, that hadn't started in about a week. Um, I do think I need to do some fuel filters on this truck. I don't need to turn the lights off. I do think I need to do some fuel filters on this truck. I don't think Mark ever replaced the fuel filters after he uh, installed that um, extra filtration on there. It's got a Baldwin filter, a cat high efficiency filter, and I don't think he let, I think, I don't remember if he left the fuel filter that's up on the intake manifold, so I have to pull that off and see. But I'll try that first, replace the fuel filters in it, and see what happens. Um, now, some of you guys have made comments about the little bit of smoke coming out the exhaust. I dump two-stroke oil into the tank every time I fill it up. I put about, I don't know, a quarter gallon of two-stroke oil. Um, the theory behind that is when these engines were designed they had higher sulfur contents in the fuel now we have lower sulfur contents that sulfur that sulfur that sulfur adds to the lubricity of the fuel or it's supposed to add lubricity to the fuel from what i've heard or wives tell maybe you guys know um, and to cope with that you end up putting some two-stroke fuel in it um, I'm also running some Cetane Booster in it. So I run Cetane Booster, um, Power Flow Service, or Power Service, Power Flow, I can't remember, I think it's Power Service, and uh, Two Stroke. And <clears throat> that Two Stroke oil will make it, you know, shoot out a little smoke out of the end. Now it shouldn't, but I'll probably overdo it a little bit. Well, that's an update on the Dodge. Um, let's hope for the best and hope that I don't have to pull a cylinder head off on it. Uh, maybe I'm just being, like I said in the last video, hypercontract and thinking there's a problem there's not really a problem. But um, let me know what you guys think. Put your comments down below. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And uh, get out and fix it.